follows against. Any abstentions? For the motion 63, none against, for abstentions, the motion is carried. Can we now move on to item 13 and can I invite Councillor Anna Key to move the motion standing in her name? And can I also advise the council that this will be Councillor Anarchy's main speech? In the city centre, we encountered several advertising boards placed in the middle of the pavements, street furniture that wasn't cordoned off, and thus it would, it, it, it would not be um, detected by long cane users. <coughs> Stairs in Liverpool 1, which were very difficult to negotiate um, because it was hard to get a sense of where they were starting and where they were ending. Um, and also, the guides told us that city centre is much more accessible than certain residential areas because in residential areas it's the overgrown shrubbery and also bins left in an untidy manner that adds to the difficulties. Um, I've mentioned the audible coins, uh, audible uh, beats and rotating cones. Um, basically they both assist people with various um, eye conditions and it is very important that our pedestrian crossings have both. However, the data obtained by the Royal National Institute uh, of Blind People's for a Freedom of Information request last year shows that in Liverpool, <coughs> only about half of pedestrian crossings have either tactile units or audio beeps, and it's only 14% that have both. Uh, 
because this, this means that very, very few of um, our crossings, you know, of our crossings are really fully accessible and this, this should be uh, one of the things that uh, the street charter uh, should aim to improve. In addition, uh, it was brought to my attention that uh, Royal National, National Institute of Black People offices across Hanover Street and uh, Church Street, um, the crossing there does not have any audio input, despite the fact that the area is used by a high number of blind and partially sighted people. It's RNIB who is there, also Action for Blind People, and Hensham Society for Blind People. Um, and another thing that was brought to my attention was that although the council has good policies regarding bin collections, uh, as in that residents uh, are required to place bins for collection on the footpath in such a manner that it will not, call, uh, it will not present a danger, um, <coughs> The, the enforcement of these uh, policies is not really there. The education of residents um, about how to place the bins in a way that they don't cause obstruction uh, should improve. Um, and also the education of waste collection teams when they repair bins um, so, so that they can do it in a more tidy manner. And these are just a few of the issues um, that I think the street charter should be dealing with. Um, and uh, I just would like to say that we, we should all work together to ensure that Liverpool has where possible pavements clear of A boards and parked cars, accessible crossings to rotating roads, audible beats, and standout paving. We should make sure that as a council uh, we work with waste collection staff where appropriate to keep bins and pavements, and that new, new developments are paired to safe crossing points and standout paving. And I believe that the street charter would be an excellent step forward in order to achieve it. And also, I would, I would therefore like to urge you to support our motion and work together towards making our streets more accessible for everyone. Thank you. We have notice of an amendment, Councillor Small. Th thank you, Lord Mayor. Want to move? There's a second, by the way. Okay. I wanted to uh, to move this amendment, but first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Councillor Key on her first speech to the council. I thought it was an excellent speech, and um, I agreed with every word that you said. Um, but I think this is a really important issue, and congratulations on bringing this issue um, to the City Council. I think disabled people are more often than not. Um, disabled not by the physical condition but by the environment around them and by other people's um, attitudes, cultural attitudes towards them about what they can and cannot do. And I think it is important that we raise issues like this and the campaign around who put that there and what happens in the physical environment is an important one and it's something that we should all be concerned about as councillors and we will take forward. I wanted Lord Mayor with this amendment to raise an issue to add an issue which came to light um, this week and um, was brought to my attention. Um, a 19 year old um, blind girl um, who um, went to a restaurant in Liverpool one with a guide dog and was refused access um, to that um, restaurant because she had her guide dog with her. Totally illegal, totally um, in breach of the um, Equalities Act, but yet it still happened and the impact that that had on that girl's confidence about being able to live an independent life, being able to do normal things that young people do, like go out into the city centre, go to restaurants with their friends, and totally knocked her for six, and was something that really shouldn't have happened. And I wanted to raise this issue tonight and to bring that in with the campaign that Guide Dogs for the Blind Association um, access um, all areas. And um, nearly 50% of Guide Dog users and assistance dog users experience refusal of service at least once a year. I think that is absolutely appalling in this city. I think our city needs to be open and accessible for all of our citizens. And that's why um, I wanted to bring in the Access All Areas campaign and to bring this with the campaign that um, Councillor Key has raised and um, tonight the RNIB campaign so that we can bring this as part of the Equalities um, Review Group, and Anna, I think you're, you're sitting on that, and I welcome that you're on that and you can input, input into that, 
so that we can bring this forward in April next year when we review um, our new um, equality objectives. And I think we need to put these issues at the heart of that because no citizen, no one in this city should be refused service because they have a guide dog. No one should not be able to get around in this city because of the way um, we construct our street furniture and our public infrastructure. So it's an important issue and I hope that that has the full support of Council tonight. Councillor Anne O'Brien. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Congratulations, uh, Councillor Keaton. That was a really excellent speech and one that I fully support. And I would just like to highlight that improving the highways infrastructure, putting in new pavements and making sure that the, the roads have tactile pavements running through and that the street lighting on our new road system actually has all those facilities will actually help. So the Accelerated Highways Programme will go a long way to help with your motion. Councillor Corbett. Uh, thank you for your speech, Anne. That was great. And thank you to Linda as well. She's still here. Who, who spoke before? Um, just to explain that the, with my new role um, as cabinet for equality, uh, Nick mentioned before about the equality review, which uh, you've now joined the group. So what we'd like to do is ask um, if Linda, if she's available, um, someone else necessarily from uh, the guide dog, uh, the blind association groups as well, to come and give evidence to that group. That will then feed through, because obviously we know that the uh, disabled uh, people are a protected group, so they come into the Equality Act, as Nick said before. But that will also make sure it goes into the heart of the council, rather than getting left on the shelf somewhere, <coughs> and come back into the full council in April. So I'd really welcome that. Thanks for that. Councillor Young. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, am I okay to formally accept that amendment for you, on your behalf? Yeah, okay, we formally we accept that amendment. Thank you very much. Um, I would just like to add, really, that we need to be looking at every element of development in the city, not just highways, but I'm glad you raised that, because I do hope that bringing forward the highways plan will still give time to give adequate inspection of every crossing that's going to be addressed and, uh, and, and um, treat this with the respect that it deserves. But similarly, with any big development, any planning application that comes in, we should be holding the task over any inadequate um, design or failure to accommodate any kind of um, disabled need, dis disability need, not just sight but physical access as well. And that's something that we need to really um, emphasise. And if we ever get a chance for the um, public realm money, then we should be using that to build those kind of things into the Councillor Kennedy? Uh, just to add to that, thank you very briefly, I mean, I don't think we should forget that we've actually been doing things about this. I've led the support of the highway team, sorry, I personally support the highways team, the equality review in getting these things right and, and improving them. But I think my my colleagues such as Councillor McClinton and my assistant cabinet member, uh, Councillor Thomas, will also endorse the fact that this city council has been taking these uh, issues very seriously. The one about parking on pavements actually is uh, something that there is only any power in London to do anything about. And we do need to get that power as part, if, this, if we can, as part of the devolution agreement. It's actually got a really silly situation um, where it's uh, not illegal to park on the pavement. It's illegal to drive onto the pavement. And you can't get on the pavement and park there unless you've actually driven on, but not able to prosecute people for actually being on the pavement, and they have those powers in London. We do need those powers here. Advertising aid boards are my first spell of transport uh, in this council. We did bring in a licensing scheme for aid boards, and I will have a look at that and see how th uh, that is working and whether it's working as effectively as it can. Um, street ca and cafe furniture, we brought in a scheme for that whereby people have to um, pay to, for a license to have a street cafe and there are recommended sizes and furniture etc. We'll have a, a look at that and see how that is working and whether it can work better. Um, some of my colleagues out in Bolton will know that we do have a lot of work to do. I don't know where they are at the moment but on overgrown shrubberies and taxes. Um, 
they are things which the highways team can do about and I would encourage all local councillors to make sure that the highways team are aware of those issues. But there are some things which will need to go in the highways that will be important to you, but there are some things we can do now and improve now, and so local councillors should get on to myself and my team in order to do that. But before I forget, congratulations on the speech, very good speech, and thanks for bringing all of this to our attention. Councillor Keyes, you have the right to reply if you wish to. Oh, oh, sorry, I've missed Councillor Meredith. So, it's a very quick thing. My name is I would like to see on the list in your uh, great speech, actually, but your, your list from inaccessible crossings down to overgrown shrubberies and branches. Could we please add cycling on pavements? Yes, this is actually part of the campaign to, to also toss the other, yes. Or raise awareness. So, we're voting on the motion as amended. All those in favour? Unanimous? Yes. Yes. Is that agreed, the substantive motion? Yes. Uh, can I ad advise that in accordance with Standing Order 7.2, Agenda Item 14 has been recommended by the Whips, indicating that it has cross-party support. Is this motion now agreed? Thank you for your attendance tonight. Thank you for your contributions and congratulations to the Councillor Keys for their maiden speech. Thank you and good night.